Hi, everybody. I'm Leah Stokes, and I am a professor at UC Santa Barbara in the political science department and also affiliated with the environmental studies department and the Brent School of Environmental Science and Management. It's great to be here today to be talking to all of you at a great event that I know if it were in person, we would all be attending. Um, I want to talk today about two big things. One, a big opportunity locally to work on climate change, and two, the massive federal opportunity that we have before us in the coming months. So first, for those of you who have maybe been, maybe been following it, the city of Santa Barbara has been considering saying that new buildings cannot have new fossil gas hookups. And this is really important policy because it turns out if we want to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, which a lot of people say is um, you know, maybe the upper limits of what we wanna do, we cannot build any new fossil fuel infrastructure. So every time we put in a new house in Santa Barbara, um, which of course we're doing more and more because we need more housing in the community for people coming in, if we decide to put a fossil fuel hookup as part of that building, then that's gonna be with us for the long haul. And it, it's gonna mean that it's gonna be even more expensive to turn over those buildings when we are retrofitting them. And so the Santa Barbara City Council has been considering passing a REACH code, which is a building code that's already been passed in I think 40 other cities in California, which says that new buildings need to be all electric. This is a really great idea, not just for climate change, but also for health, because it turns out that as we've been learning more and more about indoor uh, fossil gas use, for example, if you cook on a gas stove, we've been learning that it's actually really bad for your health. It's particularly bad for the health of young children, also people with asthma. But in general, what's happening is as you're burning fossil gas in your house, if you're cooking over a flame in your stove, you're releasing all kinds of pollutants into the air, which isn't surprising. And that's also why we have a hood fan that you should definitely be turning on when you're using your gas stove. And if you're cooking for something like half an hour, it turns out that you're creating levels of indoor air pollution that are um, above some of the safety requirements in California. So we need to really start taking seriously gas in our homes. We know that some of this infrastructure also leaks. That isn't just terrible for climate change because methane leakage is of course really bad for the planet, but it's also really bad in terms of safety. I'm sure you've seen some of these stories in places like Baltimore and Massachusetts where entire houses have exploded because of their gas hookups. And there have been some places in Santa Barbara that have been at really high risk during fires because there's gas in those homes as fires approach. So for my own self, I'm right now in the process of putting in an application to the city to retrofit my home, put in a heat pump, a hot water heater that's electric, an electric heat pump, hot water heater, put in an induction stove and go all electric. I'm sure a lot of the people on this call have already thought about buying an electric vehicle. It's a great idea, I have one. Maybe they've put solar panels on their roofs. This is really the next thing that you can do in your home if you really wanna make a difference on the climate. So I would encourage people to support the Santa Barbara City Council's effort with this REACH code and really make it as aggressive as possible. We don't want a lot of exemptions in that policy. So that's something locally that you can get involved in. Now, the other really big opportunity that's happening right now is we have an opportunity for the first comprehensive climate legislation to ever come out of Congress. This is the American Jobs Plan that President Biden introduced about a month ago. And it's an idea of spending several trillion dollars to invest in climate infrastructure across the country. I've been working very much on how we can clean up our electricity system. And the main idea for how to do that is called a clean electricity standard. This is a policy that already exists in California where we're targeting 100% clean electricity by 2045. Um, and many other states across the country are also doing this. Um, and, and I hope it's 2045, it might be 2050. But the point is that we need to be moving even faster. And one of the pledges that President Biden has been so uh, aggressive on is trying to clean up our electricity system nationwide by 2030. He wants 100% clean power by 2030. This is a super exciting idea. You know, I've written an entire book on electricity. There it is, short circuiting policy. And their electricity system is a huge source of our greenhouse gas emissions. And if we can clean up our electricity system, it will allow us to power 
our homes with clean electricity through all that electrification that I was talking about at the beginning, our uh, um, electric vehicles and a big parts of our transportation sector, and of course the power sector itself, and even about half of heavy industry. When you add up emissions from all those sectors, clean electricity plus electrification can cut emissions economy-wide in the United States by up to 75%. Wow, that's just huge. So this is a really big opportunity and I would encourage people to speak up, to say how much they support the American Jobs Plan to get involved um, through local um, environmental groups and because we really do have a huge opportunity. And one of the things that went so terribly wrong about a decade ago with the Waxman and Markey Bill in Congress is that not enough people got involved. It was too much of an inside baseball story. So if you support these ideas, you know, figure out ways that you can plug in to support the American Jobs Plan because this is gonna be such a huge opportunity for climate action. And of course, we're gonna have narrow thin margins in both the House and the Senate to actually get this done, probably through budget reconciliation this summer. So it's been a really wonderful opportunity to get the chance to talk with all of you today. I appreciate all your local activism, all your support for this great organization. And together, let's really try to take on the climate crisis and make as big of a dent as we can. So thanks for coming to this event. Lovely to see you all. And hopefully in a year, this can all be done in person. Okay, bye.